Welcome to the Tap Haven Podcast episode. How many episodes do we have? I think this is no, five. Wow. This is four. No, I have. I think this is five. Is this five? Yeah, Wait, yeah, yeah. So. We did Juicy Haze episode oh. one. Oh, Maker's yes, Mark Cast Strength episode two. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maker's Mark 46 episode three. three. Oh, balls. Tenth yes, Mountain yes, Whiskey and Spirit yeah. episode four. And then four is the five is and today. five is today. Okay. This is episode five. We have now. Uh, oh, and and I, I mean, before we know it, we'll be like uh, Illuminati, and we'll have a thousand episodes. Uh, I would hope that it doesn't get to a thousand episodes. Hopefully, we have like more time divested into deeper dives. That it's going to be more than that that and hopefully one of us dies before we get to a thousand episodes. what i don't, I don't know, know if man. that's the right uh, way of thinking about it i think a thousand is pretty want content and i want i want one sweet know. release <clears throat> i want sweet release <laughs> yes no so uh oh, man. today we're, we're content if anybody's following along at home with our last one we kind of talked about the different colorado mountain based uh distilleries that mm. we're doing and and today honestly is kind of the 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 weirdest but also uh most it's kind of interesting one we have today um because today we're doing the axe and the oak which is the from the Colorado um the the axe and oak distillery and their flagship bourbon is the Colorado Mountain Bourbon Whiskey and uh, this one's weird. It, it's and there's not a lot of information on it, other than kind of their the story of the the guys who made it, um, which is kind is of it a, a mystery whiskey or like I'm oh, sorry, mystery so bourbon. It's a blend of axe and oaks um, with bourbon that they do in house and undisclosed bourbons from distilleries in Indiana. Indiana, yeah, is Indiana like a, a up and comer to the scene, or is it just more so like this is just like a shot out in the dark? It it seems <clears throat> like a shot out in the dark. I think their goal, uh, essentially, it, you know, Kentucky is famous for their bourbons because they have the lime rock, the the mm-hmm. the, the lime rock there, <laughs> and. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the bourbons, 60% water or however much water. It, like it's the mash bill and the water. So you're getting alcohol and water. And a lot of people think that the Kentucky water, Tennessee water are, are kind of like the primo waters that you get from making whiskeys. Now, Indiana, uh, from what I could find, um, has a little bit of that. And so I think they're trying to essentially get some of that Kentucky esque flavor. Um, but I'm honestly not sure. Rocks in Indiana, it does have limestone. Rock, did you say rocks are in Indiana? No, no, no. Rocks in Indiana. Oh, okay. That Hat does contained. include got you, limestone. Got you, got you. So okay. I was about to say, I was like, yeah. Eric. Oh my gosh! I, I don't. Yes. I don't want to be. I don't. Person. I don't. I don't want to be the person to tell you. But rocks are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope so. It's um, in your soul. No. It's, it's in the air we breathe. But yes. So, the, so that's the first thing, right? We know they have their whiskey, and and the age is less than two years on this whiskey, and they do state that. So this is a less than two year bourbon. Now, silence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, so this is a very young bourbon. It is from a, a distillery and it blends Indiana distilleries that we do not know. We do not know what other whiskeys they blend into this. Okay. The only thing that they do state, by the way, is that at the end of all of this, it's about 21% rye in the mash bill. 
Okay, so it's hot. Mm -hmm. So it's a high rye bourbon, but not a rye whiskey. Um, so it'll be a little hotter than a bourbon, I think, but not quite as hot as a rye whiskey. And so I'm not quite sure where we're going to be at for this one. It's, it's, it's interesting. Now, I will say, whoever wrote the tasting notes, they're, they're trying to get you. Because we got caramel, vanilla, cinnamon butter, and fresh leather on the, the nose. And, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we got, we got a pose, supposedly, on the taste, we got some rich oak, vanilla, caramel, and warm, specifically warm, cornbread. Now, I don't know if they were just tripping <laughs> or not, but we'll find out. Did Mel just die? Yeah, yeah it she sounds did. that way. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> so, so we all did hear that freaking uh, freaking uh, tasting bill. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I I would. <laughs> Eric is suspicious. <laughs> I am suspicious, and I take so it with a grain of salt. But we'll see. So this is, is this B or C. This is B. This is B. Okay, just making sure. Okay. Yeah. Are we pouring? Yeah. Go ahead and pour it away. Now I will say I don't cameras. Yeah. I'll show mine in glass because I already poured it. Proof. And this Proof is that we're not cheaters. Yes. Now I will say this is uh I'm using my nice glass today. I felt like everybody Ooh. you know, I got the, the, the crystal Glen Cairn here. I did not choose a nice glass. I chose the only nicest glass I have. <laughs> I got the regular Glen Cairn. Nat's got a Glen Cairn on I, the way. I opened it and I immediately was like, oh, I can kind of smell it. Yeah. Wait. Ooh. Wait. Yo, wait. 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 Eric, where'd you get that wait. Glen Cairn? Where'd I get this Glen Cairn? This one? Yeah. Right here? The crystal one. Uh huh. Here. Amazon, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Thought you might have opened a box. No, but I do have it. I haven't opened. I haven't opened it either, but I have it. Guys. For the audience. We don't know if anyone's going to open the box early. We're not opening the box early. We're not opening the box early. My box hasn't showed up, guys. Chill out. By the way, audience, oh. we have a box. It's mostly for us, but y'all will get, you know, the benefit of it. It's really for everybody. It. everybody. It's yeah. really for everybody. So on the Guys. nose. On the nose, it smells awesome. Really? Uh, I, I do like it, but... I agree. There are some things I really like. <laughs> Eric's like, ah! I mean, I like immediately feel like I can smell the brown sugar. Oh, yeah. Or maybe, yeah, or I get some brown sugar. I do... Okay, this is, this is so funny, but I would say, um, to kind of preface this, I'm not a big cornbread fan. Oh, is that cornbread? Do you think? But I, I don't smell cornbread at all. I smell cornbread. I, oh. I, I think I get wood and cornbread more than just about anything else on their kind of tasting slash aroma notes. By the way, they they put oak and cornbread on their tasting notes, but I actually get that on the nose more than um, mm. I get anything else. I'm getting some really sweet notes at the very t end, trail end of the of the uh, nose. Like I definitely catch that there's like some kind of fruit in there. Did I send y'all that video? I can see that ago on how to taste whiskey. Yeah, I, no, I don't think you, you did. Like, not the one where you gotta like toss it out. <laughs> no. Oh, I gotta send that to you. I thought I did. All right. They said apple. I maybe. I you know I could see an apple. I could. Okay. They didn't say apple. They have no fruit on here. They have cinnamon they have butter. Apple on the card thing. Oh, though. they have apple on the card. Yeah, they have apple on the card thing. I didn't. Those, like, I didn't look on that card. Bingo cards on Eric. Like you know reverse. <laughs> you don't know what you're fucking. You're talking right. About. You're right. They do <laughs> have apple on here. <laughs> I no, but, yeah, 
I will. What did, sus- they, what did you catch? What do you catch whenever you smelled it? Before we said apple, what did you think it was? Did you think it was just brown sugar? Are you talking about or, on the taste or the nose? Yeah, on the nose, like for that sweetness. Because like I definitely pick it up. It's uh, very reminiscent of. Uh, I think I get that. get that corn sweetness that's very typical of bourbons, rather mm. than the. But it hasn't matured enough in the wood, in my opinion. To get rid of the corn sweetness smell and transition mm. to something like vanilla or caramel or uh, like that area of okay. sweetness. I think the cornbread right. is probably really the closest thing for me. Like, I get a lot of a, a little bit of that rye on the nose, which gives it that baking, bready smell. And then I get a little bit of that sweetness, almost like a, um, a, a, a southern cornbread that has like that honey glaze on it. The closer I get to it, the more I catch what you're talking about. I, I guess I'm catching, I'm like, if the aromas are from the top of the glass to like three inches above, at three inches, I can only smell the sweetness. Oh, he already drank. Never mind. Okay. Oh, okay. I did. I did. Okay. I'm on my. Se- I'm okay. on my chew. Okay. I'm on the Kentucky chew already. I did Didn't my. Even let everybody else know on the podcast. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's okay. It's supposed to be like a group drink. Like, babe, you're it's not supposed to be like a group drink thing. You know. <laughs> well, she doesn't. She doesn't know. She's not sure anymore. You know, because you're giving mixed signals here. Anthony, we might. I might need a backup bourbon. I don't know yet. <laughs> a backup bourbon? You're not going to be able to drink it. No, 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 no. I'm talking about being hazed by Nat over here. <laughs> oh, I mean, I was about to back up Nat and haze you a little bit more. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Man. Okay. I. Okay. That rye is definitely there. It's definitely there. The end of that is, is hot. I will let y'all kind of go first on this okay. uh on this adventure so now what are you tasting what am i tasting yeah funny enough um i feel like there's like some kind of like there's some kind of bitter sweetness in there like i'm getting something that would be akin to chocolate but i know there's no ch- it's it's not chocolate um I'm getting some woody tone, but like not it's it's not defined enough to be like a full bodied like taste. It's an amalgamation of stuff like it has a lot of things on the flavor fan, as it were. But none of it really like comes out and jumps out at me other than that fire at the end. It's not bad though like I, i'm gonna probably have to do something other than chewing it because i ju- i only chewed it so far it is very but, bright yes very a bright lot go- is there a lot going on there anthony so i just got it back <laughs> it's been a process when we initially smelled it uh it was fantastic. I could smell the brown sugar and maple syrup right away, maybe some caramel. And then after my, uh, I don't know what you called the like little first sip, the numbing sip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The palate, the palate, uh, it, it has something to do with the... Um, PP, the palate prepper. Yeah, the palate prepper. The PP. Oh, man. The PP, if you made that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> after now, guys, the, it's time for the palate prepper. Palate prepper. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I couldn't smell anything for a while, and then I just got the smell back, and, it, and so it, it's redeemed itself because I was about to get really upset. The kind of sad about it. Yeah, I would say the nose far outweighs the the tasting, in my opinion. I, I think this has a lot of the drawbacks that a young whiskey has for me. Um, the flavors that are there are kind of side to side with some harshness. 
and the complexities that do exist through this blending are muddled are muddled for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree now i will say it's weird that it's not called a rye but to me it's like a decent rye it tastes like a rye i wouldn't say a I, I think I wouldn't say a decent rye. I, I would think say it's a rye. It's a it's a <laughs> rye. So I, I think what it, Anthony is referring to here is that we've had some pretty bad ryes before. Yeah, that's why And if you're kind of, if you're bro. considering the I would argue that those are not middle of the road ryes. Those are like lower yeah, bottom barrel, barrel ryes. Yeah. But I would say that I'm on Point with that idea like this is somewhere between a low the bottom of the barrel rye to a mid barrel rye to me and there are some things i like about it it, it definitely has this bitter long tail to it mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. interesting i don't know if it's my cup of tea but if you like the the bitterness of say dark chocolate but on a more bready uh, type of whiskey like a rye you may enjoy that like it has that dark chocolate after taste essentially you know also like it's only 46 percent, but it has a very good lingering mouthfeel so if that's what you're after Agreed. and you don't care about the uh the bitterness which is definitely there that's my least favorite part about this is that dark chocolate bitter extended thing but like it yeah. smells incredible and they have a very awesome label i i really am a sucker for their label because it's just a couple of axes and i've spent the past few months just chopping away at wood so i feel like it called there, me a bud? little bit huh how are your hands there, how are your hands there bud calloused yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that checks out Good. I would like to say that I was very excited when I first opened this because I was like, oh, this is a bit of me because of the sweetness immediately. I was like, oh, and it's got rye yeah. in it. I want to. Yeah. yeah, I want to burn, but also be tantalized. But uh, it kind of has uh, a smell similar to that of a Bardstown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know enough about Bardstown. I'm going to have to go ahead and try more on the on the podcast. But like. If yeah. that's the if that's the mark of what Bardstown goes for, I'd love to try more. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I did have Bardstown while I was at your you place, did. Eric. You did. Yeah, and I loved that. That was so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. I remember now. And you yeah. were like, dude, I don't think you can find this anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, the. Um, How dare you? Yeah. The, uh, the, the, the Bardstown, essentially, they're known for their blends. And I feel that in general, <clears throat> what I tend to find is that when distilleries are blending whiskey, they tend to take a young whiskey that's a little harsh and they mellow it out with higher corn-based whiskeys, like something that's 90% corn, 85% corn, 95% corn. And it tends to add a little bit of sweetness to it and make it more, these young, harsh bourbons, a little more approachable. And I definitely think that's what I feel going on here is mm -hmm. that they're taking a super harsh young whiskey and they're adding a sweetener with these Indiana blends. Yeah. Um, not, it, so, it's not terrible, but I, I would also posit. Uh, so if anyone wants to guess, what, what do we think the MSRP is? My oh, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. I want two numbers actually. You what is numbers? what is MSRP, and what would you pay for a bottle? Okay, uh, I would say I would pay forty for this. I'd probably pay for thirty or forty for this. Um, I'd say MSRP is probably fifty fifty five. Yeah, huh? Anthony. Say MSRP is a. Probably about forty-seven, and I would say 
<laughs> that's way too no, what? you know something <laughs> <laughs> i know he's like i don't want to say the exact number but i know but, the number I you know got me yeah 45.99 yeah i was looking oh at the oh my website. god <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't hold it together. Oh, no I fucking knew there. it. Like the way you were speaking, I was like, "There's no." He doesn't fucking operate in numbers other than fives and tens. Fuck off. No. <laughs> I do. I've guessed, not. I've guessed really good things before. It's creeped people oh, out. Um, that's funny. But yeah, I would pay uh, for this. I don't know. At first, I thought when I was like, "Ooh, forty-six and on the nose," I was like, "Yeah, definitely." But then once I started drinking it, I was just like, hmm. So, I mean, I can see it being worth 40, 35, but I don't know. I would need to like see the blend. I really like that Bardstown does that when you look at it and it says, there's a seven year bourbon in here and it's 22% of the drink. And I'm like, oh, okay. You saying that immediately makes me want to get a Bardstown. Dude, like, I didn't. I didn't know that Bardstown. I, like, I, I can almost bet you money the new riff is also a blend of something. Now that I think about it, no, I hope it no, is. The new riff is yeah. not a blend. Oh, it's not. Okay, yours was a single barrel. Yep, my a beloved, single barrel. My beloved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Moment of silence for my beloved. Anyway, <laughs> so, so uh, and I, I for me, so, let me. This, in my opinion. It, is not as good as a Rittenhouse Rye single barrel, which will run you about $35. Mm. And it's not as good as a Rittenhouse Rye 100, which both have similar styles. And the Rittenhouse Rye 100 is $25. I'd probably pay... 20 ish dollars for this. Damn, Eric, you're a savage, dude. You from jump, you were like, dude, fuck this whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's being savage. I there is something to be said about this this whiskey that I think has a lot of promise. But hmm. I I think this is a whiskey that will bloom into something wonderful. At about the seven to twelve year mark, absolutely. And I yeah. don't, I don't think the company has had enough time. I like, let's see, when, when, you know, they they established yeah. in twenty thirteen, right? So let's let's look at this. Axe, Axe and Oak. While you're looking that up, yeah, the corn, the corn, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they have. Uh, a few different things. They have a cast strength, a first stake cast strength. I would love to see this in a cast strength. It's aged three mm-hmm. years. Versus the two that we have right now. Less than two. Less than two. Yeah. The um, I, I honestly don't think you would see that big of a jump between it, though. No, like, no, what, no, no, no. What's no. the MSRP on that? What's the MSRP I on agree. the cast strength? So let's Let's see. So I think we're hitting the same problem as last episode where both of these are from Colorado and both of them taste like things that we've experienced that cost far less. Mm-hmm. And I think there might be something going on just with, uh, oh, it's from Colorado and maybe it costs more. I mean, land and price of living out there is. I am definitely not saying that there is something to be said, and this is purely an MSRP. There is something to like here that is unique. True. Um, and if you like that thing, for example, the, the most rise really don't get that bitter after taste that some people might really, really enjoy. And again, the rise that I'm talking about aren't going to give the mouthfeel that Anthony likes this about this. Mm-hmm. So there yeah, is something to be said about that. For me, I don't think there are enough the warrant saying that I would choose this over those. But for some people, that might be enough. Yeah. Are you sure what we have was less than two years? Because on the website, Colorado Mountain Bourbon Whiskey says it's aged three years. Colorado Mountain Bourbon Whiskey. Um, mm. 
Got a number Any three barrel of tar. Axony of uh, Colorado Mountain. But the forty six percent, right? Yep. The label is the black with the cross axis. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, my uh, other source has some conflicting information. Oh dear. So yeah, maybe they're. From... Axe oh, I'm not sure. Axe in the oak distillery dot com. So. I mean, they could lie about their own stuff, but that would they be weird. They could too. lie about their own stuff. That's true. But it would exactly breed like a yeah. very healthy relationship with <laughs> so, the tasting community. Well, let me let me look up another source. Let's see if we can find. But yeah, on their website, they say 92 proof, age three years, number three barrel char, non chilled filter, and high rye blended bourbon. Definitely has the rye. Definitely the rye. Not Apparently, that. their founder, Jason Jackson, is a lifelong singer and songwriter and guitar player. Yep. Mm, I don't trust this created. already. We, did, we went over this already? No we, no, we 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 didn't go over the fact that he was a singer and a songwriter, but I, I, I don't trust him immediately because of the fact that he is a singer, songwriter, and guitarist, and apparently he decided to make start making bourbon like it's just it's unless you're snoop dog <laughs> and you want to go ahead and get into wine i just I, I don't see the i don't see the connection you know yeah like snoop dog at least had his time with uh oh my god what's her name martha stewart <laughs> i feel like he has a reason to be in the wine scene more than this guy. I I actually the think scene. the the thing that I was looking at had a typo, and the mm-hmm. minimum bourbon was two years. Okay, I think it was supposed to be a greater than sign, not a less than sign. Ah, okay. Yeah, because well, to be a bourbon, it has to be at least two years. But well, it is confusing yeah. that they say bourbon whiskey on their on their label. Mm. No. Because I thought there was some sort of weird stipulation about that. Now, there I will is. say the cask strength uh, bourbon here is around 75 to $85. Um, and definitely worth a try. I think this needs either a little bit more of that proof or it needs a little bit more age. And I think there's something special in like a 10-year bourbon. Yeah. might be amazing because I see I a lot of problems. Four, years. four yeah, year bourbon might also be yeah. Uh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. But um because you could sell you could set like with with what it's already building right now and giving it enough time for uh, it to define its flavor, I think yeah. within the four or five years of aging, you'd get something that's like individual enough to be able to like be like yeah that is this that is the um ax and oak kind of vibe or whatever yeah and it definitely so, yeah. tastes all the problems that i have with it tastes like a typical young bourbon mm, got, you, sure. got you um wood second yeah okay anthony mm. rating Or, ooh, ooh I was really hoping to say much higher, but me too, dude. When I opened it, I was so like you. You, if you were watching and you saw my face, you saw that I was excited, right? But god damn it, ah, oh, it almost got me. But yeah, I would. Honestly, I was going to rate it higher, but I'm trying to be more realistic and I want to make room for the times that we do have something special. Uh, I would probably give this a 3.5 or a 3. It's drinkable. It has it has potential, but I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this after having this. I wouldn't buy it. I think I I I agree with Wait, did Anthony, did you give it a four? He gave it a four. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think him, Eric. Jesus, just put it out of his misery. What do you give it, man? Come on. I think similar to where the 
Mint Mountain Whiskey and Spirit sits for me. This is around it too. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. Two. I I think there is something unique here. But it's not drinkable though. Because oh, you no, said no, no, one no. Or two is like not drinkable for you, right? So one is not drinkable. Okay. Anything above a one, I can I can sock there. I would uh, I will not if somebody had this or not this were the two options I had. You'd go with not this. I'm probably taking a water. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um Oh my god. <laughs> He's so <laughs> Oh, the boys! <laughs> the nose is spoken. <laughs> you find your whiskey wanting. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the new world. No, no. Um, and again, if people haven't heard this already, our reviews aren't anything against the creators or the no, distillers no, no, or no, anything. No, not at all. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I inherently want to try more of their whiskeys because I do think I see hints of something special here. Mm-hmm. My rating is very, um, uh, very much just where it falls on my scale of whiskeys that I have experience with. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot more whiskeys that have a one than not have a one. Mm-hmm. Do any of us um, like dark chocolate? I like uh, well, I would say man, it's hard. I don't like dark chocolate that has a lot of that bitterness. So that tail end oh. is not my not my cup Bad. of tea. Do you like dark Seg- chocolate? You, yo, like 90%? Seg- yo, segue S- real quick. Real quick. We'll come right back around if you want to. Okay. It's fine. My sister went to I think it was Germany came back with five bars of chocolate, right? Uh, you can buy this stuff in the States online and they'll ship it to you. But she was like, every single one is like a tasting experience and you have to go ahead and chew them and like, give me your notes afterwards. Right? So I, I did the first bar like, Oh, it's just, it's dark. It's chocolate. It's whatever. It's like, it's, it's not a big deal. Tell me why this doesn't chew like it's fruit and chocolate at the same time. It's chocolate, but it's it's juicy yeah. and like you and you love it. It's so good. Like it's it is the it is the quintessential like uh, citrusy crisp of orange and that kind of almost ooey gooey um, sugary high that you get from like strawberries and uh, other high fructose fruits, but distilled under this like bed of just velvet chocolate. It's mm. Sounds amazing. I need a minute. Oh. <laughs> that that I'll leads me by the brand, but it's fantastic. That leads me to another perfect segue. I to, love dark chocolate. Yeah. Question. Uh, to our non-sponsor, uh, <laughs> the only chocolate maker in the states that is absolutely wonderful, Norman Love Confections. Please sponsor us. Whoa. Thank you. I'll talk to you all later. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I will try all your chocolates on the podcast. It'll be a chocolate podcast if you want it to be. That's okay. <laughs> you just tell me what you want. Yes. <laughs> but I totally understand what you're talking about. Like, oh, a good chocolate is hard to find. And man, they're amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's our bourbon. This is just to give a, a little a sneak peek, a little a DBZ preview at the end for the next episode that happens to be half the episode. Um, we're, we're trying probably my most um, anticipated. anticipated one of these three, which is the Breckenridge. Whiskey. Th- this one looks dope, by the way. Just, I'm, just, I'm just super so excited for this one. Coming. Yeah. I have heard great things about the um the Breckenridge distillery. Um I have heard this particular bourbon is actually really good. 
uh, from credible or sources that tend to have similar tastes to mine. Um, so I am I am super excited to try this next one, uh, and we'll be doing that next time. And then mm -hmm. we have super for interesting stuff for the episode after that. Oh yeah, which will be fun. This will be super dope. Super excited. Yes. Yes. So question do you yeah. want to add like a little <clears throat> segment to the rating part of would uh of, of buy it or pass it and be Ooh, like hey buy you it bought it you show it. up with a, you show up with a bottle and you, you'd be like, you know hey, what now it. that we've uh crucified ourselves for the five di oh, well four distilleries we've talked about in the <laughs> first five episodes <laughs> and they'll probably never sponsor us or deal with this again mean. um but Maybe they won't hate us as much if we just say buy it or not buy it. <laughs> like, if anything, get it for the bottle. This bottle is dope. <laughs> the bottle is dope. Get it for the non Kentucky distilleries, honestly. Like, I mm. want to see more non Kentucky distilleries start to enter the market and get some age under their belt. I feel like they don't have the clout to be able to let alcohol sit in barrels and collect taxes for seven years. It's a bit money, Eric money. Yeah. That's crazy. The, like yeah. when you broke down the fact that like literally you are paying for every single year that barrel ever stays like on your property and is like accruing age. That is insane yeah. to me it, it it boggles my mind to think like what major distilleries have to go ahead and do to have those kinds of specialty casks and be like yeah we don't even sell this until people start coming in for tours and paying like paying to come in and get this bottle like that's insane yeah. to me like what if people don't come like no yeah. and i i don't think they, people so just just in case for anybody curious that kind of drinks bourbon but doesn't really do any of the marketing research on like how bourbon is marketed and how money flow works for distilleries. It's a really interesting subject, but in short for this particular topic, uh, whenever you have a bourbon and you put it in a barrel and you start aging said bourbon, mm -hmm. if you keep it on your property, then you have to pay taxes on that bourbon every year and they ain't cheap <laughs> yeah now that isn't cheap but this is a lot of the reason why high <laughs> bourbons that have been aged for a long time tend to be a higher price mm -hmm. sometimes outrageously so because oftentimes they're paying yeah, who thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases to just on the taxes to keep and age this bourbon, which is ridiculous, obviously, but it is what it is. And so, uh, yeah. So, get, for a distillery, especially outside of Kentucky, that has some state laws that kind of help with distillery, has the lines. To, they have a huge distillery market in Kentucky. They have some advantages of being in Kentucky or being on the bourbon trail or being a part of that culture that these other companies like the Breckenridge Distillery or Old Fourth or the um, Axe and the Oak, like they don't have those benefits. Yeah. They have a local community and a select non-local community that kind of supports them. So when I say that I, I desperately don't want my rating to reflect the product, I want it to Change reflect your, my taste buds. Change your rating, Eric. I'm not changing my rating, Change but fucking rating, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> there are going to be people who find this bourbon to be something special. And I will True. say, especially if you're coming from these bottom of the barrel barrels that you drink oftentimes in college or when you can't yeah. afford it or mm -hmm. when you're just starting out, you go for these brand names, the, the, the you know, the lowest Jack Jim Bean, the, the, the lowest Jack Daniels, right? Yeah. Like, and as much as I hate Jack Daniels, 
the single barrel of Jack Daniels is a very, very well-renowned bourbon. Is it though? Oh yeah, the single barrel is going to cost you. You're you're, you're going to have oh, really? trouble finding a single barrel, and their oh, single fair. barrel is very highly rated. But, Interesting. But that's different than their blended, low-proof, young, two-year off-the-line bourbon that they make for profit, mm. right? So when I say two out of ten, it is a drinkable whiskey that some people will love, but it is not my cup of tea. Mm. And that's how Breathe. my rating, I want to go on record. That's how my rating should be perceived. <laughs> Brief. Very brief little side side note before we move on, obviously. Um, hmm. Would you quantify the creation of these specialty single bar barrels like what Jack Daniels has as passion projects rather than actual physical um, projects? Eh. Or yeah. is there actual money in being able to sell a barrel that has been aging for as long as so this one has? I <laughs> will say... Quick which, answer, Eric. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and yeah. no. Um, okay. Yes, you. single barrels and things like that are more of a passion project, but no in the sense that they can make a significant amount of profit. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Um. It depends on the single barrel. It depends on how they market it. And it depends on the, on the company. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of them kind of super, in, uh, like, uh, superficially inflate their ability to supply things. And that causes mm. more demand out of out of scarcity rather yeah. than more demand out of actual taste yes. copy yes got it and yes, so yes. that causes some things for example as much as i love it the um there are some that are really good and some that are really really aren't and there is a uh, a project done by the stitzel and weller um distillery uh called the um i'm forgetting the name of it uh what's it called what is it called the orphan barrel mm. orphan barrels are these ideas of ghost distilleries or barrels that distilleries didn't want and they're selling them off and stitzel and weller will essentially go and they'll buy them and then they'll age those barrels for a little bit longer or some set amount in their distillery and then they'll sell all of that product as an orphan barrel and they're these special editions that have huge they're very scarce and there isn't a lot of this product and so msrp tends to be in the two to three hundred dollar range if not more and most of these bottles aren't worth two to three hundred dollars like 95 percent of them that doesn't mean they're bad but they're definitely not in the two to three hundred dollar range for the taste that you're getting in comparison to something like a 21 year red breast of the same price that is insanely mm -hmm. good like it just isn't in that price range it's in the wrong price right. range why right. do they price it there because of scarcity mm -hmm. right um, and this and really good marketing. And so. Okay. Eh. okay. Okay. I got my answer. Okay. Uh, I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Andy, you live over there. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add that one cool thing about the, what are they called? I already forgot. Axe in the Oak is that you can just purchase their product straight from their website, which is pretty nice. nice. Yeah, that's awesome. There was a yeah. beer that I uh, want, really wanted called Black is Beautiful, like three, four, five years ago, almost. And no, sorry, three years ago. But they didn't deliver. They were only in, I think, Austin. So I had, I would have had to have driven to Austin, I believe, to go ahead and get any. Oh, but, wow. yeah. No. So yeah, that's a big perk. And uh, earlier I was trying to talk about us with our taste buds because, you know, 
I think potentially my wife might actually love this bourbon because she likes bitter things. She loves the bitterest of dark chocolates, so that might be well worth $46 for her. Yeah, 100%. This is a very, uh, all things considered, 40 to $50 is a middle-of-the-road price for a good bourbon. And so when you're looking in that price range, you really do have to look for your preferences more than anything else. Because as at fun, we were talking about the Whiskey Tribe before we went live, but as mm-hmm. the Whiskey Tribe says, the best bottle of any whiskey is the drink you like to drink when you like to drink it. It's that easy, boss. Yeah. So, um, with that said, what have y'all been playing this week? <laughs> I, I'll start. Okay. I've been playing nothing, y'all. Oh. I've been playing absolute goose egg. Oof. Absolute. Do you know how hard it is to make a career change, y'all? It's hard. It's insane. It's, it's hard. so fucking hard. Oh, my God. Very hard. So... Uh, that on top of the fact that unfortunately I will not be able to go ahead and get on the podcast for the next three weeks because I will be in Japan. Fun. I'm excited for I you. I have been doing nothing but prepping for that trip and oh. studying for this these uh, certificates. So fun times. Fun, fun, we, fun times. I, su- I for one support your adult <laughs> oh, the adulting. I, like I, I I don't ap- I don't appreciate the fact that you're supporting my adulting because like every single child part of me is like you know you could just like stop and I'm like there is no you way. can't <laughs> you can't because you have to move <laughs> I have to sir <laughs> sir oh my gosh yeah I haven't been able pl- to play anything I haven't really uh, I've looked at a few things that I would probably w- would like to play but a lot of it is being held back right now by the fact that my machine is not where I want it to be so uh, we are currently in a state of complete stasis unfortunately reasonable Anthony what have you been playing so uh, I also have been adulting a little too much because of the move, so hopefully that dwindles down a little bit over the next month or two. But uh, I've been watching a lot of GSL, um, nice. Global StarCraft League, which I still keep up with, at least on the VOD form. So uh pretty sure it's actually already over, but I'm still on round of eight group b <laughs> oh wow Jesus, so, dude he's watching it deep yeah he's so, like i want to see every single instance. oh yeah no i just i love watching it while i'm having like my morning breakfast or something like that it's just really great um there's a new so tastosis was the old uh yeah. casting archon but unfortunately artosis moved to canada uh for his family so oh. if you want some tastosis now you have to watch the asl which is starcraft one uh so you can still get it but he's been replaced by a really great caster um oh. whose name is state he was a professional uh he actually funnily enough just to see how it would go went into the qualifiers for this season of gsl and he had to go up against one of the big time <laughs> pros, like Chore or something like that. And and the and they he didn't know who it was because they uh like hide their names and stuff. And the the pro was like, Hey state, it's me, Cure. How are you doing? <laughs> you know, because they see each other all the time at That's the office, funny. and he's like, Oh fuck, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Don't wow. look at me. I'm washed. <laughs> yeah, but I've been really enjoying watching that, and then I have actually played some games. Uh, just a tiny bit of Sea of Thieves. Um, they recently came out with guilds, so, you know, of course I created Epic Fail, uh, even though I'm the only one in it. Uh, <laughs> but it's there. Keep it strong. And then I, uh, I joined the Meat Fleet 7, 
a uh, content creator named Hitbo has gotten we there's like the Meat Fleet 42. There are like 42 guilds of players cuz you can only have 24 people in a guild. Uh which is kind of weird. Okay. Why yeah. did why did they choose that number? I'm thinking it's because maybe in the future, the maximum number of players you could theoretically put on a server is 24. Six galleons. Six galleons, yep. Six galleons. And maybe for some sort of like, oh, as a guild, you can now go party and have fun with everyone together or something weird. But it's kind of, there's some, there's some neat <laughs> things about it. You get to like pledge your, uh, any ship that you want in your fleet to the guild's fleet. And then people can go and take that fleet out and, or sorry, that ship out and make progress on it and destroy it. Uh, the oh, biggest thing great. that they added is that if you have a rowboat um, and you leave the game without sinking and that rowboat is attached, you will start the game with it when you come back. That's good. Um, They've made a lot of big changes. Like they made a change where there's this thing called double gunning where you'd animation cancel and shoot people basically twice in a millisecond. Uh, and they they got that. rid of that, okay. which is fantastic. Um, and lots of other little quality of life changes. But they did make a huge mistake, which is that they have these uh, world events that are great because the game's all about interacting with the other players. And they have this one chest, the only chest that anybody really cares about anymore, because once you start playing the game, that's the only chest. It's a chest of fortune that unlocks new cosmetics, and it's glorious. It used to spawn randomly in the Fort of Fortune, because the Fort of Fortune would randomly spawn. Um, they moved it for the new season to the Fort of the Damned, which has been around since, like, 2019. And it is a player activated event, so it's not random. So you know somebody's there. And it's just kind of boring for a lot of people because they it's one fort. There's like I don't know how many forts there are on the Sea of Thieves, but it's just the same exact place with all the same interactions. Like you can't hide anywhere special. Like there's it's just always the same. Uh, so people don't like that, especially because originally they said that when the Chest of Fortune came out, that it wasn't going to be in player activated events. And so everyone was anticipated like, oh, where's it going to be moved to this season? They said it was going to move. Is it going to be in like this event or that event? That would be cool. How wild would that be? No, they lied. They disappointed horribly. Oh, no. And speaking of disappointments. Star Citizen, not oh, as dude, disappointing you are, as you might just think. Losing, my dude. No, no, I'm teasing. Most yeah. people think Star Citizen is a disappointment, but we just had Citizen Con, and it yeah. is not a disappointment. Star Citizen is doing incredibly. I oh. have had so much fun lately. On what that note, it? what is it? On that note, man. Oh, okay, I gotta. Oh man. Yeah. Anthony, do you have more? I do. Go, because go. Cause I have a roller coaster here. <laughs> there are so many amazing things that are have already come out and are coming out. So I got to play a little bit of their new star system, Pyro, uh, recently, which was really cool. It's just this dilapidated, like, star system the there's solar flares that take you out while you're mid battle which happened one time i stepped outside of a space station there was a solar flare going on i panicked i had to get back inside it was intense it's really cool i was just minding my own business like exploring a space station and then suddenly there was a gang and they started shooting at me i didn't know you could shoot people on space Space stations. It turns out I had gone past the part where you can't shoot unknowingly. But yeah, like it's been great. And it's also what I'm looking forward to because there's a ton of things that are coming out like this quarter, Q4. Um, and like basically, one of the biggest things that I know Eric will love is that they're fixing the interaction system. There's no longer going to be this weird inner thought mechanic. You're going to like have a 
uh, object oriented thing. So you look at it and you can hold F if you don't want to like do the initial interaction, like the default one. And then you can choose a different one or you can even change the default interaction you want to have. So instead of pick up every time, you could be like, I just want to inspect everything. I don't want to pick up everything. And then every time you look at it, by default, it'll say inspect. I love so, that. I love that. That'll yeah. be nice. Another thing apparently coming soon, item rarities and boons. So actually like common, uncommon, epic, legendary armors and stuff like That's that. Like an MMO. Yep, yep, it's finally it finally is. Nat, and, Nat well, you 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 stop that shit. I want that. <laughs> Hey. Well, <laughs> even more exciting is that for for their game <laughs> so those of you that don't know star citizen has two games basically and the other game is squadron 42 that is the single player story driven game that game is feature complete so now they're just polishing things which means they have taken all of the devs, which a majority of their devs were committed to making the features complete, and they are all now working on the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. And so things are coming out quickly. They showed off an amazing demo of server meshing, where they had like one room with three servers managing it seamlessly. It was great. I wish there was a deeper dive since I understand that stuff, but it looked promising. Uh, one really cool thing they have is character customization sculpting. So when you go to make your your you or your avatar for the game, you can get a stepping off point. But once you're where you want to be, you can click on the ear and drag around and change the ear. You can click on different parts of the face. Oh, people are going to fuck with that. Sculpt it. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's so great and then the last two things they've got like combat sliding coming in which just makes the game feel like a real game because sliding is just like all fps games nowadays Pretty and much. then they also are coming out with a hygiene mechanic if you okay. don't fucking keep clean you're gonna get people are gonna say shit you're gonna have disease faster or disease in general like so many things oh. are gonna happen not even not even just hygiene for you hygiene for your weapons if you don't store your weapon in a like a weapon locker in your ship it's going to wear and tear faster and then have the jamming you know like where it jams and you have to the fix it and stuff like yeah. that more often and so there's so much coming that's just like a tiny bit of what's coming i i do have one question because you might know this yeah, all of that sounds amazing. I uh, t- ah man, roller coaster. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> for a Citizen Con, did they talk about the tick rate for the servers yet? No, I don't think so. I didn't finish no. watching Citizen Con, but I don't think so. Because I know that is that's a huge thing. That I think is going to be a I I know it's current it's been a barrier for them when it comes to like the FPS feel, but yeah, I know they, they planned at some point to like keep upping that and make that better. But they've pretty much said like at I think last con last year they essentially said that it's going to be thirty for the foreseeable future, right? Mm-hmm. But I I I am hoping. That as they start to finish up these FPS features like sliding and all of that, that the server tick rate kind of goes up with that. And I know that's hard, obviously, but man, that will make such a big difference if they can do, even if they could do something like flight Mm -hmm. space is at 30 tick rate. But then when you shard, like go into a shard, a server shard, that is more combat oriented. They up the server tick rate as you get closer and closer as you move from shard to shard. Yeah, something like they that should, could be good. With what they showed, they should be able to do that sort of thing. Like I could see them. Yeah, especially for places that are like bunkers where you are guaranteed to be doing 
FPS battle. But the weird thing is that my mind goes to, okay, you've got a massive ship battle going on, right? But guess what? You jump in one of the uh, boarding ships. I can't remember what they're called. And it latches onto the big ship and penetrates the hull. And now you have a massive ship battle going on outside, but also an FPS battle going on inside. And with server meshing, they can dedicate servers to both the interior combat and the exterior combat separately. So theoretically, yeah, maybe they could do like a high tick rate 60 plus inside yeah. of an individual ship. While if you're not doing FPS inside of a ship, they're still yeah. doing just like 30. I mean, that, 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 that from what I've seen, that's going to be one of their biggest problems. So I was watching a deep dive into the FPS mechanics for, um, for Star Citizen not too long ago. And one of their biggest hurdles right now with FPS is the fact that once their player rate gets high well, enough with MMO, it's harder and harder for the server to keep up. Be able, no, not yeah. keep up to process the AI responses mm. of NPCs quickly enough for the player to feel like the yeah. AI response is smooth. One, when they did the pyro demo at CitizenCon, they had 30 FPS servers and the AI was dangerous. It, so, you just died. Like, yeah. I follow uh, Burks, and he's really good, and he just could not stand a chance against them. Yeah, he, he died twice. And I know they twice. they had plans to make that better. So, like, I have no doubts they can make the AI good enough to work with 30 FPS. I think the the only problem there is that at some point there's that barrier still exists. They just moved the goalpost. So to like. Probably not an issue until it goes like to a live server. And it's hard to say if it will be an issue because they're increasing the time to kill, especially with the legendary epic armors. They don't want you to have that situation where, you know, you just get dead in an instant or something like that. Um, people hope that if you're not wearing the armor, you still die instantly to like a headshot. It makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's what they're talking about. And with a higher time to kill, the high, the high tick rate isn't as important. Uh, another fun thing about armor they talked about is that if you're wearing a large amount of armor while you're flying a ship, you will have limited movement speed. And uh, like... Alacrity? The t next it, it'll, it'll limit how well you can fly the ship. So if you're flying a nimble ship it won't be as nimble. You won't be able to move your head around as well. It's interesting because they're trying to do things to in encourage you to take off that suit, put it in your suit locker, and, you know, do the space combat in a uh, in an smaller suit. suit. Yeah, there's going to be, and yeah, there's going to be suits that are like better for holding high G maneuvers and stuff like that as well. So I could see it. I could see it. It's pretty neat. It's, it's pretty exciting. And, Nice. Everything that I've mentioned is supposed to come out in the next year. Nice. Okay. Which is nice. Yeah. That's exciting. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think Star Citizen might hit beta in like a year or two. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be dope. So, uh, yeah, I just want to show it to Before you jump into your roller coaster, okay. it's called Foundry Fine Craft. Minecraft chocolate. Okay, okay. It is. Oh, you can take a bit. Oh, okay. It is like chewing fruit and chocolate at the same time. It's insane. I might have some right now. Mm, Micro batch is... bean to bar. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah, I want to put yourself on some like crack cocaine. Yeah, this that might right, be that right might here. be my like. It, 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 my family always does like little stocking stuffers for Christmas. I might just Do buy that. like a pack and like put it in everybody's stockings. Like I guarantee you, people will be like, "Oh my god, Eric, this is so, this is so great!" Yeah. Okay, continue, sir. 
So, well, I'll look at, look I'll at that start. Look at that packaging. Look at that packaging. That is, that is pretty. Continue. So I'll start with the, the, the really bad side first. So I have been playing or researching a lot of games recently, and there's some really fun stuff to talk about. But um, because we're talking about Star Citizen and because last time we talked about uh, Star Citizen and uh, in on the other side of that coin, we talked about Pantheon. Oh, yeah. And... I was super excited last last meeting, but they have since released all of the crazy bullshit that has been going on with Pantheon since our last discussion. No. So they decided to do the we're going to release a single player adventure thing first so people can try out the systems and they're going to work on that full time for who knows how long. They're no. they're they have entirely changed the art style to a cartoonish art style, which oh, doesn't match no. the history or world at all. And that leads me to believe they've been working and are going to continue to work on that art style for who knows how long. Um, all things said, things look grim, considering that this game started in 2014 and just now have totally changed direction and that leads me to believe that we probably aren't seeing anything about pantheon for another 10 years if anything at all at this point because there aren't a lot of companies like star like star citizen did this too and star citizen put a lot of development time into their single player experience squadron 42 they did that because they wanted a monetary resource well more quickly I, I thought squadron 42 was the initial idea in the persistent universe was a stretch goal no the initial idea has always been the persistent universe they went and said we're going to do squadron 42 and squadron 42 is where they curtailed a lot there essentially there was a lot of marketing research done early and they wanted to get something like Squadron 42 to the market very quickly so people could try out a ideal state of their game in the Persistent Universe because the marketers said that would cause it to be interesting, right? You don't have to worry about server tick rates. You don't have to worry about server interactions. You don't have to worry about PvP. All you have to do is create fun gameplay and mm -hmm. NPCs. And you give that to people and people become excited about, oh, if I can do this in an open, persistent world, this will be amazing, right? And now yeah. people are reinvigorated. Well, there's only one company that has done that and even remotely succeeded. And that's Star Citizen. Every other company who has tried this from an MMO standpoint has failed entirely. And most of them don't ever release the MMO after they state they're going to do this. So yeah, the nice thing about Star Citizen is literally the MMO already exists. We're playing it in alpha, and yeah. they're just adding to it every every day. I would also argue the massive amount of money helps. Right? They don't yeah. they they could literally gain no more money. For five years and just work on the game and i bet you the company has enough money to survive for long enough to make the mmo if they really needed to now it's going to be hard to get new money it's going to be hard to like win over investors and things like that with that idea but like in a in a really rough situation they could probably do it they just saw other chances for money and they were like, well, now we can definitely fund more fun stuff, right? But Pantheon isn't doing that. Pantheon is very obviously now in a rough state because why else would they need to do a single player experience? So the fact that they're coming out with all this information is really worrying. Uh, and by all intents and purposes, I would argue that... Uh, Probably 
I don't, I don't, I don't see do a future game. with this game. Yeah, I, I think, I, I it's going to be, it, it'll probably it's die out. Yeah, it, it's if it makes yeah. it now, it's going to be more of a miracle story than a, anything else. One of the other big things that Star Citizen has is literally just Chris Roberts is the one who wants the persistent universe. Yeah, when, like the leader and owner is like, this is what I want. Like this is this and, is happening. Yeah, and, and it's so unfortunate too that all of this is probably spurred, unfortunately, by the unfortunate death of Brad McQuaid, who was the co-creator of EverQuest and the founder of Visionary Realms, who does Pantheon. And mm. he's the visionary in Visionary Realms, and he's one of the best MMORPG uh, developers and creators that you know of the past 30 years he is amazing at coming up with interesting and dynamic mechanics and he was the leader and up to the point at, at which he passed away everything that came out of visionary realms was moving forward and looked great and that i th sucks. i think since he's passed away there has just not been that same level of passion and drive put into the project as he put into that project because he wanted to create something for people who loved those older MMOs, but better. He was driving these interesting mechanics that still mm -hmm. held true to the social MMOs of old. And he was the guy who was like, I'm not budging on the cool stuff that was there. And I only will budge on the stuff that makes it better. Right. And so the mm. product looked good. Now they're changing everything. And, and man, it's, it's rough. So I'm I'd, sorry, man. Yeah, it, it sucks. And that'll lead me into a lot of my last weeks, which uh, I, I like. I'm going to move through it quickly, but Nat's, Nat's going to hate me for a lot of this. Um, so Am I've I? been, uh, yeah, probably. I, so as you all know, last time I was playing EverQuest, I've been playing a lot of EverQuest. They've done a lot of that, oh, no. but I've been on an MMO train. Oh no, <laughs> Eric. So, so um, I've played a, no, a lot of Eric. MMOs. So no, I've been playing the game that we think you've been playing. You didn't tell any of us. <laughs> so no, Eric. So I'm like level 40 in uh, classic hardcore. Um, oh my <laughs> sweet god! I've uh, um, why I, wouldn't you invite I your the friend? World was over. I've, 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 I've I've been doing a little bit of retail and leveling up to try out some of the Dragonflight stuff oh, in retail. Oh my sweet god! <laughs> I've uh. Um, I, I, I'm Eric. I may have, Eric I may have, I may have, uh, no, you know, what's kidding. really weird about this for me is that, like, every now and then, and recently, like, within the past few weeks, my wife is like, you know, I've been thinking about playing World of Warcraft. Like, I should have known if you're thinking about it, Eric's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, me and me and Ash are essentially the same entity we're right on the like same yeah, i know so, i kind of want to play world of warcraft and i from will now on, I'm like, Who's I, playing what i just want to say this is hysterical to me by the way so i was watching blizzcon which was this past was weekend and back. i love that he's the best person in wow like he's the best fucking, person in wow i believe in wow when he works on it and every expansion True. and every piece of that game that he's worked on has been amazing like, full stop. Like, here's the thing. So, Anthony, I don't know how much you've kept up with BlizzCon, obviously, but uh, essentially they, they released the trailer for the next three expansions of retail, not the next single mm -hmm. expansion. They're doing a story that's going to take about, uh, they said quicker than normal, so I'm assuming they're going to do an expansion a year. So about four years of content, and it's going to cover... The coolest parts of the lore, in my opinion, mm -hmm. which I won't spoil it. Watch a trailer. It's pretty cool. But uh, stop it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the um, 
<laughs> Eric, Eric, for everybody listening, Eric has never been so dismissive of me. Like that was the first time I have ever like in raid chat, even in raid chat, like telling me what I no, need to do. As no, a tank. that's not true. I've never heard him speak to me. For like this. for those who don't know, uh, it was early in our relationship, and in World of Warcraft, the second expansion, there's a raid called Karazhan. Oh man, I love it. And I used to heal in. in Nathaniel over here used to tank. <laughs> so I would keep him alive. Mm -hmm. And we were tanking a wonderful... We were doing a boss, and we did it differently than everybody else because we were relatively good at it. So mm -hmm. you're supposed to switch off tanks. But we didn't. We just trusted Nat and trusted me, and I could <laughs> heal it, and it's fine. And then he says, guys, one second. <laughs> And I have to sit there and heal this man as he leaves the computer for 30 minutes. Did I leave for 30 minutes? Yes. <laughs> Dude, you still do that. That's true. I do. Yes. He left for like 30 minutes and he was like, I'll be fine when I get back. Were we in the middle of the fight or did we pull? Yes. We were in the middle of no. the, the fight with the horse the horse in karazan um is that the very beginning it's is the that stables yes we were in stables hold on karazan stables karazan karazan or whatever yeah Sand stables yeah fight we were yeah, doing karazan stables yeah wait we no wait hold on hold on hold on yeah it's like in lower cat Attunement the Huntsman? Yes. We were doing Ataman the Huntsman. Okay. And you were yeah. tanking the steed. Oh, and you went yeah. AFK for like 30 <laughs> minutes. That's fair. I did do that. And we couldn't kill the 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 horse by for, for anybody who who doesn't know. If one of your tanks leaves, there there's some mechanic there. I, I can't remember the exact details, but like we couldn't survive without him and nobody could attack the horse at risk of taking aggro and everybody dying so mm. we had to sit there and watch as everybody in the raid attempted to heal this man while he's not here to try and survive yep but yep all that said uh chris Metzen does a really great job they released a bunch of new stuff but i will say the funniest thing is that they I don't think I've ever heard them on stage go, we're changing our motto and our new features we're designing with the intent of respecting your time. And in my mind, I was like, it took you 20 fucking years to figure that out. Dude, like, what are we doing? Dude, it, I mean, Eric, if you look at the metrics of the game, Man. it makes sense why. This is the first time that like, I honestly, I actually, you know what? I don't know the actual metrics. I don't. Well, know they don't the publish them. However, I will say, WoW's on the up this year. Classic, hardcore, classic in general, uh, have caused the player number and Dragonflight have caused the player numbers to be statistically high. And I wouldn't say Dragonflight. It's well, no. So what I happens? But what I'm talking about is a okay. lot of people go and play classic. Mm -hmm. and don't actually they go to play classic but then they play retail mm -hmm. retail servers are like full a lot of them are super full. high server pop and full mm -hmm. and the reason isn't because people are like oh retail is amazing no. it's it's that they're watching people play classic hardcore they're watching people play classic and they're they're seeing that and they're like man i want to play but i don't want to play that exactly and they go and they play retail, which is like a bunch of candy now. And Pretty I'm not much. saying that's bad. Uh, like there's something to be said about those individual things being interesting, but it's not difficult. It's not like, and there are some challenging things like Mythic Plus is still definitely the most challenging thing in the game. Like nothing in classic or classic hardcore is challenging. It's just, if you know the mechanics, it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. 
retail is way harder than classic and classic hardcore. It's just like less wait, punishing. Wait, did you, did you say that it's way hard? retail is harder than classic? Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Classic is easy. Classic is a fifteen-year-old game that like people already know all the mechanics of. You can go, let me put it this way: the fact that you can even do a classic hardcore. Like should, you should can make you through all of that right. game without dying. Oh wait, yeah. Did I bring up the mod and did you install it for uh, the last text of? Like, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, but yes, I I've been doing that and it's been uh, a ton of fun. Like classic hardcore is a, is a lot of fun. Um, it's just very chill. It, it, it like nothing's different about it. Retail has some fun storylines that are going on so far and like Dragonflight. Um but I think the the thing that I'm most excited for and the thing that actually will probably keep me playing for a little bit longer is that the seasons of exploration that looks dope. is what I, I have wanted from have Warcraft that. for so long. Even from when I first started, because here's the thing. When I first started Classic, mm. and then I, I made it all the way to the end of Classic, and then I, I stopped playing, and then me and Anthony started hanging out, and Burning Crusade came out, and we right before Burning Gosh, Crusade, good, we good started good. on Alliance because he was playing on Alliance, so I started over, Stupid. and we did all of Burning Stupid. Crusade. Stupid. Be clear here. Stupid. Eric Stupid. is talking about World of Warcraft original, not yes. Classic. He's oh. talking about when he yes. played it originally yes in 2000 and in 2004 yeah right in 2004 and 2005 so back then when we played it there was this thing that occurred in original world of warcraft that doesn't didn't even really happen when i played classic where every dungeon felt interesting new and these dungeons had a lot of build up in the area and quests around it that were super, like, really cool. Seasons of Exploration has the opportunity to make those same experiences cool again by mm. making the... Uh, so, Anthony, to Don't explain Seasons of Exploration, essentially mm -hmm. what's going to happen is there are going to be some things that you can find that allow you to gain different and new abilities for classic players so it's world of warcraft classic the, the mm. classes that you have are from classic they're from the original world of warcraft mm. from 2004 the world and quests are original 2004 but the level cap is 25 mm -hmm. and the dungeon that you run, ran at level Black 25 Black. yeah it is a yeah. 10 man raid now and they have changed mechanics and made it mm -hmm. a slightly new dungeon. Now, at some point after that, you're going to get gear. You're going to do the Tin Man. You're going to do that. And a few months after, they're going to raise Damn. the level cap by mm -hmm. a three, five. We don't know yet. In the dungeon hmm. that you run at that level, the dungeon that you used to do a four man for is like going to be. Yeah, it's going to be a new raid. Right. And so now, instead of having to spend a thousand hours preparing for a raid, people get to go and experience what I consider to be the best experience in gaming to date, still to this date. Like if I could go into World of Warcraft and just start raiding and raid at the level that is enjoyable, by the way, but like the oh LFR God. bullshit is crappy. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm annoyed because they figured it out. Because the problem is that there's such a big disparity between how much time people can commit to something, but there's not a disparity between how many people want to do the thing. Yeah. They've like, solved Eric, it. You get to max level easily because you have so much time. You live in a black hole that we don't understand. You have more time than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> they solved and it. Then, Anthony, it yeah, takes... You're level 25. And the gear so that the gear that you get, the, the guess what? The best gear you can get at twenty five is from quests. 
that you got getting to 25. Yeah. Like well, also, I remember at that level we had really hard, intense dungeons in class in original. And now wow. they're making them more interesting, more yeah. dynamic, harder, and they're making like, it into a raid. Eric, and that, the time the investment is less. Eric, tell them about the best part. Best part? Which best part? Which part is the best part for you? The best part is they take the the classes that you can play oh, and they yeah. add twists the way that you can play them. Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted to play a warlock who's an actual tank, you can do it. Yeah. So now, play, yeah, if you they created Marshall, a classless yeah. system with the flavor of the classes that you have. So a warlock, mm -hmm. if you want a tank. You find a rune that gives you demon form, and you can tank in demon form. When does this come out? <laughs> Anthony, they they it's, they it's just like stop it, stop it, Nat. They just they just <laughs> talked stop about it. this. They just showed the video for this two days ago, Anthony. It, yeah. it releases on November thirtieth of this year. No. <laughs> Already, Anthony, you have 24 days to get on this train with me. <laughs> I'll be there. Wait, I'm not allowed on the train. What happened? No, Nat, I considered you on the train already. Like, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> I knew you were getting on. Like, did you really think you weren't going to? Nat, you oh, judged me for World of Warcraft. <laughs> and then I when I, I said BlizzCon was this last weekend, do you know what you told me? Yeah, I watched I, it. I watched <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Don't read me like that. How dare you? There's people listening, probably. Oh man. <laughs> oh god. So so yes, day of my favorite part of world of warcraft has always been the intense awesome raids that they have and they have literally found the solution for people being able to experience the best parts of wow in my opinion in fun easy to entry points bite-sized like, ways yeah love it i love it, love it. so yeah, for oh, all things Sean said, tank. yo, dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, be so fucking cool. Okay, I cannot wait okay. for this. Okay. I cannot wait for this. It is going to be so amazing um, if they do it right. I hope they keep doing it. This is literally what I've wanted from WoW since I stopped playing in, uh, like, really in Wrath of the Lich King the first time it came through. Mm -hmm. They were like. Mm -hmm. The, when I played again in BFA and Legion and I did intense raiding and I did all the I did all the mythic raids and I was part of raid teams and all of that. When I did that, I was like, I love raiding at super high levels. But the time investment that this is is, is absolute bullshit. <laughs> it is. And I was I was right there next to you, but not next to you because I wanted to be there. Yeah. I couldn't put that same amount of time into it to be able to keep yeah. up with you and be there. Yeah. I wasn't even like willing. I honestly yeah. thought them. I honestly thought this franchise was dead. To be totally honest with you, Dragonflight yeah. looked. Dra Dragonflight looked cool. I'll give you that. But like, I will say, whole, so far, Dragonflight is infinitely better than Shadowlands, infinitely better oh, yeah. than BFA, and infinitely oh, yeah. better than Warlords of Draenor. So, I, I you didn't say Legion. He did not say Legion. It's not better than Legion. I, I don't know who would who would say that Dragonflight is better than Legion. Le so it, it, the, Legion way, was the, the way the way was the time Driss Metzen left. Actually, it was. It's yeah. classic TVC, and then Wrath of the Lich King, and then Legion, and then Dragonflight. And then everything else is <laughs> off the screen. There, everything <laughs> is off the screen. Every other expansion is off the screen. There is okay, something so to be said about Miss of Pandaria and the class identity oh, in Miss of Pandaria. Eric, how, no. I think the classes were great in Miss of Pandaria, but everything else around them sucked. I love it. Mm -hmm. Important question. Yes. I dig it. 
with this new season of Discovery thing, the hairdo with it is it is WoW Classic, correct? Does that mm -hmm. mean that over time I might get to experience Wrath of the Lich King? Could be. We don't know so what like, they're going to do. You, do you, you? We don't know if you because, like, I presume you just do Classic WoW until level twenty five. Mm hmm. And then once you get to 25, when they release the next five levels, you do classic WoW until level 30. And then a few months pass, they do it to 35. Both problems. The problem of you never getting to experience raids and the problem of you being like, I'm never going to keep up with anybody to do classics. So why would I? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think it's a, I think it's akin to what action RPGs do with their expansions and the idea that it's very it. easy to go ahead and get maxed out and once you get it. there you get room to experience you get room to experiment as well as to test as much because the, really it does also yeah. come down to if you're introducing new aspects into a known environment you have that familiarity but you also have that room for growth um you also have to get to master this new manifestation that they've given you because i don't know about you but like I don't I could care less if this was literally just like the same game. The fact that they added the idea of being given a room to change the way your entire class plays, it it introduces the wonder back into the game. Like yeah. I didn't care before because they are they threw away the, the story a long time ago for me. Yeah. Like I, also, I just I just couldn't care. Also, Eric, if you ever want me to play WoW, you just should remember that you you know who to talk to. You got to talk to the person that bought these. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Well, I I should Get that I should note filth off of my camera. Her, that's my wife. Your your wife has a tattoo. He has a tattoo from Art of Warcraft. Does she have an alliance tattoo or a horse no. tattoo? No, it's a remember. it's a has... it's a shadow priest tattoo. Oh, okay, that's it's fine. the blade that contains the god. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, what's it? What's it is? It's not Nazoth. Who is in the blade? I think it is. It's, it is Nazoth, right? Uh, it's not Nazoth. It's the one that whispers to Sylvanas, right? Yeah, she's the one who's yeah. going to be showing up in yeah. the. It's Zalat right? Zalatoth. Zalatoth. Yeah, and Zalatoth. Blade oh, of the okay. Black Empire. Yeah, it is, isn't Zalatoth supposed to be like the main um, bad guy? It of contains this... um um uh. I don't know if it has they said who it contains. There was something. No, I knew it was. A big, does it have a, a, a charge? A charge? I think it was a big deal in Legion. I think it I may have it a charge. With Legion. It was a really big deal in Legion. I don't know. I remember know. like there being like a, a quest where somebody became like attuned to I, it or something like that. I think it and has a charge. The first expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a charge. Okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not Nazoth. Yasharaj. Yasharaj. Why Yasharaj. is that how it's pronounced? Yasharaj. That sounds because, right. Because you're wrong. Yeah. Eric. So okay. okay. <laughs> so so there's all the wow stuff, which I'm sure next Huge. one of the next episodes when Nat's Nat's gonna be coming back from Japan and playing that and immediately play, with I'll us. I'll be jet lagged out of my fucking yeah. mind. <laughs> but with that said, I'm super excited for that. That's what I'm most excited yeah. for too, by mm. the way, Nat, before we get to that. Mm. There's Rings. One more game that I have been playing a lot of. I, I I say a lot, but let's see. According to Steam, it's only uh fifty hours. Uh so mm -hmm. take that with what it is. Um okay. I've been doing backpack battles, which is an early backpack access game. It's an, battles. it's an early access um indie game. It uh so essentially it's a it's kind of like a roguelite pvp uh auto battler and essentially what you do is you build out your backpack with different items like in uh, diablo 2 style like they take up little quadrants and they have really cool interesting combo mechanics and then it's an auto battler and it's actually pretty fun. It's got some cool builds to it. It's really lightweight. It's a really easy game to like watch something and just play on the side type of deal. Um, okay. 
but uh, it's it's pretty fun. I think I've played it to the extent that I'll play it until it releases. But I think when it releases, it has a lot of promise. I, I recommend it for any, or pretty much anybody who's trying it out. Um, did you ever play Mechabellum? Th- did I play what? Mechabellum. Mechabellum. It is on my list. <laughs> To you play. Never played That's fine. So, so I haven't played it yet. I still have it on my list, but I have been, I have been doing mostly WoW with a side of backpack battles. Um, uh, oh, it's there's a demo for it for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel, try it out. It's it's super fun. Um, the last thing is this past weekend, uh, and this is outside of the purview of this. Uh, uh, podcast mostly, but I played a bunch of board games. So I had a board gaming weekend, and oh, I did you play anything new? Yeah, I so almost all of it was new. Not not all of it, but most of it. So I got to play Mage Knight, which is by Vlada Chatfil, which is the guy who does code names. He's one of my favorite game designers. One of my friends. I mean, he's great. His What's it called? game designer. It's called Mage Knight. It's best with two players. It takes about six and a half to seven hours per player. Uh, the 60 to 240 minute playing time that they put on Board Game Geek is an absolute fucking lie. Um, it's eighty dollars. It took us about 13 to 14 hours to play through it with two people in its entirety. Um, so that's what I did on Friday. Uh, it is <laughs> it is super fun. I I started at 8 a.m. and ended at 2 a.m. Um. And that's what? All, that's all, that's all. Did you <laughs> were you not listening that? No, no, I heard. I heard. Okay. <laughs> um okay. so Saturday, I woke up early and we played Twilight Imperium for the first time. Twilight Imperium only took us about 14 hours. It was a little bit less. What? <laughs> um we played the third edition of Twilight Imperium and it's marginally fun, but I would argue it's not nearly as fun as Mage Knight. But I have been told that Twilight Imperium is better with more people, and we only had three people. Um, so might play it again, might not. Uh, and then Sunday, we played the Return to Dark Tower, which is one of my favorite games, and it's, it was fun. And we played the Ruins of Arnok with the expansion, which is also by the Czech Games team, which is the team that Vlada works on. And Ruins of Arnok is also amazing. I recommend trying out all of those, but especially Return to Dark Tower and Ruins of Arnok. Those only take about three and a half to four hours. Much more manageable, much more enjoyable. A Mage Knight is also fun if you break it into multiple sessions. You can't you can't say, oh, I played board games and then like it's three games that took you three days to finish you know i Matt, think i think i did like 34 36 hours of board game playing from friday to sunday segue. where did so, you get the time he, he just, short little I story don't... short little story about me and my wife's courtship before we were dating uh she thought i was going to be at an event with our friends our group of friends um but she didn't say she was going on Facebook. So that night I decided to play video games, probably with both of you. Def- definitely something like, you know, Dota or StarCraft or I don't know what at the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she went to this game in the dorm room and she had a ton of makeup on. And her roommate was like, why are you so dolled up? She thought I was going to be there. And then she had to play a board game that she found very boring for nine hours. <laughs> I know, what board game was it? I don't remember, but she I'm gonna have to remind us and next it, time. Put it in our tech skirt. Yeah, yeah. Ask her. I need to know. That's hysterical. <laughs> like, what game did you suffer through that Anthony did not show up for? That's, That's funny. That's so fucked. That sucks. It's so fucked. I'm so sorry for her. Yeah, that's yeah. that's hysterical though. But yes, there are there are some board games that take a lot of time. I would say Mage Knight was worth the time. Uh Twilight Imperium wasn't my my favorite, but um I would try it again with the right group of people. And I also think it's much better if you have somebody who know everybody at the table having played it once. And kind of fresh on the rules 
will make that game more enjoyable, I feel too. And I think mm. you have to have there's like a sweet spot of it's a there are political aspects to the game. So the more people you have, the more the political aspects kind of happen. And so I feel having an odd number of people that is greater than five, so like five, seven, nine, somewhere one of those numbers will make the political game a lot more enjoyable because then you will have uh, cases where one side always wins and somebody's always trying to convince that last person in the political phase every time. And I think yeah, and I think that'll just make it fun. Um, we still had that for a three person game, but essentially we had one round of politics and then that pretty much dictated the, the whole state of the game for the next 13 hours. And then we never really politicked again because there really wasn't a reason to. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Motherfucker. So, but, um, that said, what are you excited for? Oh, I'm excited for seasons of discovery. Okay. Yeah, that's my and that's my excitement. I'm adding that to my excited for. Okay. That. Okay. But you also okay. My excited for is Japan. That, um, I mean, Japan. But like, let's let's be real. Like, like it's like a it's a given. I want to give something else. Obviously. Um, we tomorrow. need pictures. You better you better fucking send us pictures. I mean, I'm gonna take pictures, but I'm also no, gonna, like you it's Japanese whiskey no, guys. You go Japanese whiskey. You better, dude. Go visit um the Nika Distillery or the um the Suntory Distillery. I, I will not take my wife to any distillery. She'll, she'll, Mel would lo- Mel would love that. What are you talking about? I will. I will have you ask her to do that. Hey, How Mel. About that? No, she can't hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> she's like, she's like, what? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Eric asks if uh, you would want to go to a whiskey distillery in J- in Japan. She didn't even walk into the room, y'all. She immediately backed out and then went back to trying out her clothes. <laughs> She no, I told you, dude. So sad. I told you. I know the black cat that is my wife. <laughs> we have to take her to Kentucky with all the other women's. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I am most excited for um, getting back into reading physical books again. Like, no? I didn't realize how much I miss like flipping pages and just like losing, no. like just time. Dude, it's uh, so I just nice. Finished yeah, I just finished reading Fire and Song. It's uh, yeah. from a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just Brandon finished Brandon Sanderson. It. No, not 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 Brandon Sanderson. George Martin. Martin. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Not Brandon Sanderson. Not, not wait. Uh, doesn't no, it, wait. What fire was Fire and Fire and Song? It's a it's a what is it? It's a war war formed or something like that. War formed uh, series. It oh. is. So I found them because I read a book by an artist, a uh, sorry, an author named Will White, and he loved the series. He was like, dude, you guys have to go and buy and read this book. It's not so fire like, and song. I was I thought for some reason when you said that, I thought you were talking about the sunlit man. No, I have that book that's coming. Yeah. yeah. I had to. St- I, so my what I'm excited for now that I finished that book, there are a ton of books coming out like in the next few days. Um, Jim Butcher is coming out with his next book in the Cinder Spires series. If you guys love the, um, if you love like boat c- combat, but like cloud punky, that that series is perfect. Mm-hmm. Like so, look into the that's Cinder my Spires. mom's favorite series right now. Yeah. It's so good. so good. The second one's coming out tomorrow. I'm. It's already pre-ordered on on my Audible. Nice. Like I'm stoked. Um, that's coming out. Uh, I just bought another book by Fonda Lee uh, called. Oh God, what is it called? While you look that up, ironically enough, I am also looking forward to reading real books because we literally just set up our reading corner with a couple of wingback chairs. Nice. Yeah, buddy. 
Un- oh, uh, Untethered Sky by uh, uh, Fonda Lee. It's her follow up after Jade, the Jade, uh, the Green Bone Saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was great. I finished The Will of the Many. You guys need to read it. I'm telling you now, it is your top read of the year. It is, it throws, no, no, listen. It throws the, a hell of a curve. Actually, ball. you know what? You're oh, you're probably yeah, right too. because I've been rereading, fucking. You need the eye of the world, you, and the wheel dude, of time. You mean you mean the wheel of time? Yeah. Yeah, about that, buddy. I'm on book and then four. Fi- finally, my last little. Uh, I think my last book thing. Uh, what was it? Something's coming out. Uh, oh, I have freaking Yumi and the Nightmare Painter and the Sunlit oh. Man pretty much lined up like back to back. And I am just I'm stoked. Like I have the hard cover like men. Like, it's so nice. Hard, so Mine are excited. all sealed, though. I'm buying the audiobooks and listening to them. But you're sealing them. Why? You got to read them. Like, you got to read Dude, them. Have it. Uh, uh, you've uh, seen you've seen my corner. I got I, I my, for anybody who doesn't know my basement. I have a bunch of cubbies all lit in different colors. And all of my signed and nice Brandon Sanderson books are all across the wall. So. Are, are you are you signed? No, the Secret Project ones aren't signed. He didn't. I don't. Okay. He didn't do any signed. I don't copies think he did sign that. ones. Yeah. No. no. Okay. But. Um. But yeah. Uh. Oh, and then Will White's coming out with this is sequel to the um, Captain. Yeah. It, it's just it's just a great time to be like it a person. So many able good to stuff. Just, fall into a hole so i'm stoked to like get back into books again i need to figure out a way to balance my real lifetime with the books because i spent the last three days chewing through a book that was probably supposed to last me a good like half a month and i i chewed it up and spit it out (laughs) i was like oh god give me more audiobooks i listen to it while i'm doing household chores man showering anything yeah yeah, Anything. I love them too, but like th- there's something about like flipping the page. Agreed, like, agreed. Like, Nothing beats actually out. flipping the page, but yeah. anytime I'm doing miniature painting, anytime I'm doing oh, chores, yeah. oh, anytime yeah. I'm doing uh, when I'm in the shower, if I'm in the restroom, literally every single time I get yeah. up and I oh. don't have to listen to something else, I'm doing an audio in book. It. In yeah. it, yeah. Since we're, oh, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Just you having anything to look forward to. I'm looking forward to the final chapter. The final the chapter? chapter that just came out a few days ago, I think. What's the final chapter for Attack on Titan? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. So I've seen some te- teaser animations. Like, sorry, no, not teaser animations. I've seen some of the animations for the episode that came out two days ago, and <laughs> yep. fuck. <laughs> dude excited for yeah. those of you guys who have already seen it Levi <laughs> oh. that's all I gotta say that's all I have to say oh my god so looking good. at this YouTube title Attack on the Titans ending is a once in a lifetime masterpiece wow. <laughs> some people are saying like it's like it's ruined like there's nothing you can do to like uh, they there's nothing they can do to come back from the way that they're doing the ending and I'm like Shut the fuck up. Just just go the fuck home and shut the fuck up. Like this That's isn't for funny. you. Obviously it's not for you. Not obviously. for you. But mm-hmm. man, that's well that's fun, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, closing out episode five. Woo! And we'll uh Spring Break! Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll see y'all in the next episode. Bye. Enjoy y'all's break. Bye. Peace.